So I'm just making this quick video to go over the um, current LTS route for any percent major glitches or any percent MG. Um, basically, the only reason I'm making this video is because we've been able to make the route a bit more consistent in the last couple of days by figuring out what tempos work best with a metronome. Now, if you don't have a metronome, I'd highly recommend downloading one on your phone if you plan on running um, any percent MG, because it does make the category a lot easier. Um, there are a couple things that you're going to want to set up before you um, start doing LTS in any level. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you have a save in file 2. It doesn't really matter too much which file you have your unexpected party save in, but you want to make sure that you have it in one of the files. Um, it's optimal for full game runs to save unexpected party in file 2 and to save every other level in file 1. The other thing you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that you have subtitles off to avoid crashing the game in certain levels. So you can see that I've already turned subtitles off. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be saving in whatever level I want to do LTS in. And where you save is fairly important because you want to make sure you save somewhere near an area where you can treat your text box. Text boxes look like this, obviously. Um, and what we're going to be doing is, once we've saved in whatever level we want to LTS out of, we're going to be reloading the unexpected party save. There's going to be a lot of weird stuff going on in unexpected party. Basically, um, the first thing I'm going to do in unexpected party is I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to start creating what we call menu dupes. Now, the way menu dupes work is, if you are in the pause menu, and you select exit game, the game will generally try to open a little box that asks you whether you really want to exit the game. Looks like that. Um, we can actually create what's called a duped menu by selecting that at the same time that we switch the page. So, the first thing that you can do is you can just switch to this page, um... Press A and the R trigger at the same time, because obviously the R trigger and the L trigger switch between the pages. So if you press A and the R trigger at the same time, you've created what we call a duped menu. You're going to want to create four or five of those. Just like that. Um, sometimes the sound will actually stop playing in the pages when you do that. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but th this is where things are going to get a bit interesting, because I'm going to unpause here, and I'm going to go ahead and end on Expected Party. And the first thing you'll notice when I end on Expected Party is that this weird text box pops up as soon as the subtitle pops up. That's perfectly normal. That is exactly what you want to happen. But you just want to go ahead and end a level. Now, the very first thing that's going to happen here once we exit the vendor is you're going to notice that that menu that popped up is actually going to be playing over the cutscene. You can navigate through that menu, but you can't actually select load game. And I am explaining all of this right now, because unfortunately I'm not going to have time to do it during the cutscene, because the cutscene is limited on time. But you'll notice you'll be able to navigate through the menu with like the D-pad or the joystick or really whatever, but you won't be able to select any options. In order to change that, we're going to, as soon as the menu loads, navigate one page to the left and then back one page to the right. Because the page to the left of the one that it boots into, is able to pop up. However, um, if you try to navigate to the right, like, farther than that, if you try to navigate to the right page, the game will crash, so just make sure you don't do that. But what we're going to be doing is we are going to be loading our save file, and then we are going to be pressing A to confirm the load, and exactly a certain amount of frames later, I don't actually know how many frames it is, but exactly a certain amount of frames later, we are going to be pressing the start button to skip the cutscene. I can't exactly explain what's happening there, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to explain what's happening there, but um, that's all that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a little bit tight timing, and because you have to do it an exact number of frames later, that's why I have my metronome here. If you can hear it in the background, that's exactly what it is. Um, for pretty much every level, you want to have the metronome at a tempo of 118, which is what I found to be the most consistent. In Barrels Out of Bond, you want to have it at 116, and in Inside Information, you want to have it at 120. Those are the most consistent numbers that I've found from all my testing, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the metronome. I'm going to do exactly all that that I just said. Um, 
I'm gonna navigate one page to the left, back to the right, to the options menu. I'm gonna load my warm welcome save, and then here I'm going to press A to select yes, and exactly one click later, press start to skip the cutscene. And that was exactly right, that's exactly the way it should look. If you see a box pop up that says the words load successful, then that means that you've done it late. And if you boot into Roast Mutton, then that means that you've pressed start early. But if you boot into Warm Welcome, or if you boot into whatever level you actually loaded, without... I, I can't think of words. If you boot into whatever level you loaded without seeing a load successful box, then that means you've done it right. As soon as you boot into whatever level you loaded, um, you'll notice that um, if you press start, you're not going to be able to bring up the start menu. I'm, again, not exactly sure why that happens, so I'm not going to try to explain it. However, um, you can end level pretty easily now by just triggering any text box. So, again, um, things like collecting a health potion will work. Things like um, collecting a skeleton key, collecting a health potion. Bil making Bilbo talk will not work, because um, when Bilbo talks, generally, um, that's, that's a different type of subtitle box. And actually, those subtitle boxes are exactly what crash the game. So, if you bring up one of those subtitle boxes and the subtitles are on, it will crash the game, which is why we have subtitles off, is to avoid those crashes. But just bringing up a text box like that will bring up this nice menu, which says Load Successful. So now, if you just press A, you can obviously just end a level just like that. So, that's, that's how to do the new LTS trick. Um, one extra word here, um, for some reason... LTS generally affects the loading screen of the next level, adds about 2 or 3 seconds to it, so if you're used to skipping cutscenes at certain second values, just add about 2 or 3 seconds to that. So yeah, that's really all there is to explain for that.